Hi, my name is Luke Matarazzo, and I'll be presenting on elliptic curve cryptography for crypto and authentication. And so elliptic curve cryptography is also known as ECC. And uh, I'm giving this talk under the assumption that you have a basic understanding of public key cryptography, um, specifically RSA and Diffie-Hellman, and some very basic number theory. Um, so I'm going to sort of give an introduction to ECC, talk about how it works, how it's used, and in what applications it's used today, and its strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so the idea of ECC was originally introduced uh, and suggested in 1985, and it, it is an asymmetric or public key cryptography method, similar to RSA or Diffie-Hellman. It is not an entirely new crypto system, but it's just a way to do public key or asymmetric cryptography. Um, just like RSA and really public key cryptography in general, it relies on a uh, trapdoor function. And um, in terms of applications, it's similar to RSA and Diffie-Hellman, but uh, more complex math is used. So the way it works is that it utilizes uh, the math behind elliptic curves and those equations. And it ends up working on these two characteristics that these types of curves have. So one of those is that it has horizontal symmetry, which means that any point on the curve can be reflected over the x-axis and it will still be on the curve. And the other characteristic is that any non-vertical line that you draw on the curve will only intersect this curve a maximum of three times. So here we have just a basic elliptic curve, which would be represented by the equation that uh, you saw earlier. And so really the basis of this idea is with the lines, as I stated, you know, if you draw one line, non-vertical, it won't touch the curve more than three times. <clears throat> so if you start with two points and you draw a line through them, you should end up at a third point. So at this point, um, if you're above the x-axis, we'll say that you go down. And if you are below the x-axis, we'll say that you go up. So you start with two points, you uh, make a line through those, and you find a third point. And then from there, you either go down or up, depending on where you are on the axis. And this idea is called dotting, and um, it can be repeated multiple times. So this animation here uh, basically just represents what I explained. So like we have A and B, if you dot A with B, you get this point C. And since it's above the x-axis, you go down and then you get your point C, and then from there, you're able to get your other point, and that's below the x-axis, so you go up. And so with this idea of dotting, if you take an initial point and dot it with itself uh, in a similar fashion, n number of times, it is difficult to find n, even if you know the starting and end points. So because it's easy to do the dotting, but difficult to know how many times you dotted the original point to get the final point, that is why we have a trapdoor function. We can perform one way easily, but going backwards is difficult. So this picture is a representation of the dots of an elliptic curve, but um, modded by p, which is a prime number. And I'll talk more about that and why that's used later. But for now, this is just the points of a curve plotted, uh, modded by p. And so as you can see, I said earlier, there's uh, the horizontal symmetry. And you can see that any point um, should have a mirrored point on the other side of the x-axis. And so with this animation, you can see sort of the same idea with the dotting of A and B to get C. And this is sort of how the math is actually done with the points of the elliptic curve. In this animation, it's only going from A to B to C. But if you repeat sort of this process, it is infeasible to find the number of times that you dotted a certain point, even if you know where you started from and where you ended at, which is why we have such a good trapdoor function with this. So a common way that ECC is um, used is with the Diffie-Hellman idea. And so when you're using Diffie-Hellman with ECC, what you would do is you take your elliptic curve function or equation and you mod it by P, which uh, is a prime number, which is a similar idea that you use in uh, Diffie-Hellman. So if you have Alice and Bob and they want to communicate, they're going to exchange some numbers to create a shared secret, just like you do in Diffie-Hellman. So to start out, there is a public equation for this elliptic curve that they're going to be using. And then you have P, which is also public, the prime. And then you have a starting point, which is represented by J and K. And these are all public things. So in order for them to actually do this key exchange, Alice is going to choose a, a random secret, which is her N. And um, she's going to multiply the given point JK, the public point, by her secret. And this isn't just a regular, typical multiplication. It's a, it's a special multiplication using elliptic curve math. 
And so Bob is going to receive this, and he'll uh, multiply that resulting point with his secret. And so then he's got the shared key. And then if they repeat these steps in the reverse, now Alice and Bob both have the shared key, and they're able to communicate using it just as in Diffie-Hellman. And since they're using this sort of uh, Diffie-Hellman idea, there are a couple of attacks that it is susceptible to, just like in Diffie-Hellman, but I will uh, talk about that later as I get on to the weaknesses of ECC. So over the past decade, elliptic curve cryptography has been uh, getting more and more popular, and uh, actually the U.S. government has been using it for their internal communications. Apple's iMessage has been using it for uh, their signatures. Bitcoin has been using it to prove ownership of Bitcoins. And this really can be used anywhere that uh, RSA or Diffie-Hellman is being used. So one of the strengths of ECC is that it relies on the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem, which is a very difficult problem to solve. And this is kind of similar to the other public key crypto algorithms where it relies on sort of one problem being difficult to solve. And this problem is where uh, ECC draws its strength from. And so in this particular problem, researchers have been working on ways to break it other than brute force for about 30 years now, and they have been unsuccessful. So basically they've they figured out the only way that they can actually break this is by brute forcing it, making it really just um, not feasible to actually break. Um, however, with quantum computing, that sort of changes things, but there are also ways um, to sort of combat that, and I'll talk about that on the next slide. And um, so some, one of the main advantages of ECC is that you get a similar amount of security, but with a much smaller key size uh, compared to RSA or Diffie-Hellman. So for example, if you have a 256-bit key in ECC, say you were going to encrypt something with that, you'd be able to do that about 20 times faster than if you used a 2048-bit key in RSA. But the upside is that with the same 256-bit key for ECC, you have about the same security as you do for a 3072-bit RSA key. So it's much faster while actually being much, much smaller. So since it's um, faster, and smaller and more secure, it actually makes this a great candidate for use on embedded and mobile devices because of the limited hardware that you have. Um, and also a lot of websites that are using SSL and TLS are starting to move towards using ECC Diffie-Hellman because of how much faster it makes everything and you know everyone wants their web page to load faster. And so kind of at this point it seems like ECC is really the way of the future for crypto and like it can't really have any downsides. But just like the other algorithms, there are a couple drawbacks, and we'll talk about those. So probably one of the biggest attacks on ECC is with quantum computing, and it has been theorized that with less than half the computing power that it would take to break a comparable RSA key, you would be able to break an ECC key. So this kind of attack works on the way that um, ECC the Diffie-Hellman implementation is sort of done right now, but there are other methods that have been developed that are not susceptible to this quantum computing attack. Um, also, um, as I mentioned earlier, since we're using ECC with um, Diffie-Hellman, you have the same attack vectors that Diffie-Hellman did, so such as the man in the middle and other attacks, but as I said, there's, there's no way to actually break the key or break the encryption in a smart fashion. You have to resort to brute force. And possibly the biggest downfall of ECC is just sort of the, the trust issues with it because of its association with NIST and uh, the way that the NSA has sort of pushed NIST to standardize it and at the NSA's promotion of ECC. Um, and so one of the biggest reasons for concern is that um, the random number generator used for RSA, which is dual uh, ECDRBG, which is just a pseudo-random number generator that uses elliptic curve technology, had been backdoored by the NSA, and RSA actually had recalled some of their devices because it used this random number generator. And uh, this number generator was actually standardized by NIST, and they are the same people that have published 15 curves to be used with ECC. So because of this uh, connection, people strongly believe that something similar has been done with these um, ECC curves. So there are a lot of skeptics with using these curves, um, not with the actual algorithm itself or the math itself, but just um, the way that it's been standardized and its association with NIST and the NSA. And uh, the final issue, which is kind of a big deal, is that uh, there are over 100 patents relating to elliptic curves and their use, and uh, a lot of these BlackBerry happens to own. And so because of all these patents, it sort of makes um, 
sort of makes it things hard for people to actually implement it and still be within the legal bounds and without you know running into any legal trouble. So all that being said, um, elliptic curve cryptography is definitely a great way to um, to go about doing public key crypto, assuming that the given curves are not backdoored and they are actually secure.